Can I steal some from you too? Yeah, of course, of course. That's what they're there for. All right. Over here. Thank you. What's up YouTube and welcome back to see you out there. Today, I'm gonna be doing something a little different. So as y'all know, Brad's been doing his how-to videos and his review videos on Wednesdays. Well, I'm gonna steal his Wednesday slot video and do my own little how-to video. And this is something that means a lot to me. Uh, I'm sure y'all have seen in our videos, Brad's mentioned that my major was a marine biology major in college. Uh, but I don't work in that field anymore, so anytime that there's a, a volunteer project in the area that has to do with our ecosystem, uh, I like to get involved. So Galveston Bay Foundation is doing a marsh planting off of Stewart Road today, and I think we should go. So stick with me, I'll see you out there, and we'll see how it's done. Obviously not right here, we're in a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Our property is just across the street, guys. We're gonna be hiking in. It's about a five, 10 minute walk. It is on a road, but it's a gravel road, so that's why we have you hike in. Um, once we get in there, then we'll give you a little bit more instructions on exactly what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it. But uh, just for some background, this is our Sweetwater Preserve. It's about a 450 acre property that was donated to the foundation back in the 90s. And it's a really important piece of property because it not only um, has shoreline along the bayfront, it also has coastal prairie habitat that's important for so many bird species, freshwater wetlands, or even one of the places the sandhill cranes come into winter and roost. It's beautiful. Uh, so keep your eyes out for lots of awesome wildlife out there today. And what you guys are going to be assisting with is a project that's called a living shoreline. So we've actually Ooh. built Ooh. oyster reefs. Yeah, we actually have some living shoreline research students from U of H today, UHDL. Um, and so this project was built to not only create habitat, but also to help protect this land from eroding. We don't want to lose the uplands just as much as we don't want to lose the wetlands. So you guys are helping to assist with both today. Now a few safety things, um, as I mentioned, we are hiking out there in nature, so just watch where you step. There are critters that live out there, although it's very hot, so I'm sure most of them are away and sleeping and hiding. Um, same in the water, we are in the bay system. There are stingrays and other things out there, so when you're in the water, I ask that you all do what's called the stingray shuffle, rather than stomping, just walk nice and slow, shuffle in your feet. Also, there could be debris, so if you're going slow, you won't trip on it. I'm a huge klutz, so trust me, I've learned the lesson. <laughs> Go slow. <laughs> um, but other than that, there is some oyster reef out there. It will keep you far away from it, but it is sharp, so just you know, mind where you're stepping and walking. Um, but yeah, we'll give you more instructions when we get on site. All you need with you right now is water. That is the number one most important thing. Looks like everybody's got good shoes on. It is very muddy out there, so make sure if you've got tie-on shoes, they're good and tight. Um, and you will be getting wet. It's usually about up to my waist. So if you've got keys, phones, we've got a place you can leave them once we get out there. But I guarantee you, do not want them in your pockets. I will have my phone out. Alrighty y'all, we're on our way down to the marsh where we're gonna be doing the planting. She did say it is going to be super mosquito-y. So we're carrying bug spray with us and we're gonna be fumigating on the way down to the marsh. Um, while we're walking down there, we'll go over what we wear when we do these marsh plantings. One, fall cap. Keep the sun out of your face. Um, wear a t-shirt and shorts so you don't care about getting wet because you will be getting in the water. The director that was giving the uh, intro said about waist deep, so probably about chest deep for me. <laughs> um, so waterproof shorts if you have them. Also, be sure to wear sneakers or, or shoes that won't get sucked off in the marsh. Sometimes it gets super silty and mushy on the ground and your shoes can get sucked right off your feet. Um, and also uh, wear closed toed. Make sure you protect your feet as well because there are oyster shells that could cut you or debris that you could kick and you just don't want to deal with that. So, closed toed shoes that won't come off in the marsh. And um, that's pretty much it. Bring water. Always bring water.
my audio was not great on this section, so I'm just going to kind of quickly talk you through it. Um, this portion of the trip is where the director is going over what we're planning and the importance of this grass that we're planning and how to plan it. So first question, what are we planning? We're planning a native marsh grass called Spartina alterniflora, uh, also called smooth cord grass. Uh, it's got extremely strong stems that can withstand hurricanes and strong winds, and it has an even stronger root system uh, with rhizomes that shoot out in all different directions and hold this grass in place and also help prevent erosion. And these rhizomes, when they spread out in all different directions, they have more grass that pops up from them. So this grass uh, grows very, very fast. Uh, the importance of this grass to the marsh, well, like I said, it blocks the wind, and which helps prevent erosion. The roots, you know, hold the, the silt together. Uh, it also creates a nursery habitat for oysters and fish, which is extremely important for us fishermen and fisher gals. Uh, it also acts as a filter to the marsh as well. So here's the fun part. This is planting the Spartan alterniflora. So the instructor is telling us to get into groups of two or three. One person is gonna be the planter and the other person is going to be the dibbler. That tool that that girl's using is called a dibble. And you put it in the ground and you move it back and forth and back and forth. It's like a shovel. And uh, it creates a nice hole in the ground. So what you do is you keep the dibble in the ground and the, the planter will grab smooth cord grass in clumps of two or three, put them together, and then you grab them at the root system, like she's showing you right there. Then they can put their hand by the dibble and glide down into the hole. Now you like to use the dibble as a guide because the marsh is, can be super silty and you may not be able to see the ground. So use it as like a little guide. Once the plant is in the ground, then you can use your foot to pack it in there. And also if you give it a little wiggle, it'll uh, pack in there even better.
I just went back and got some more grass. We're almost done planting. And uh, yeah, the marsh is looking so awesome right now. So I highly encourage y'all to take your family out here and try this. They have projects all year round and uh, it's fun. Alrighty, so we just finished up planting all that Spartina alterniflora. Yes, smooth cord grass. We planted 19 buckets and the director of the program said that there's 350 stems of these Spartinas in each bucket. So y'all do the math, 19 buckets, 350 stems. We did some good. We covered some area, we got wet, we got dirty, it was fun. So I totally recommend y'all taking your families out here. We had all different kinds of people out here today. We had college students that were doing research projects. We had high school kids that were coming here for extra credit. We had people that just love doing conservation projects and volunteering coming out. And it was just a ton of fun learning about a different, a bunch of different things. Um, Galveston Bay Foundation also showed us that uh, the oyster restoration project that they're doing right there. I kind of got some footage of that. Um, they were saying that oysters can filter, one oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day and they also change color depending on what um, they're actually filtering. So that's really, really cool. Um, what else? I think that's it. If y'all enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, drop a few comments, say hi. Um, I hope y'all like this video. This is my how to plant marsh grass video and uh, as always, we'll see you out there.